Greetings, my motion graphic gardeners. Apparently many people wondered how I created that infinite looping flower that you can see in my project, The X. And I thought since people are asking, I might as well show you. So grab a garden trowel and dig in. Like with everything, this starts simple, with a simple plane. And this plane will be used to create our flower petals. So we'll start by turning down the segments. With segments, I'll leave it just two, and then height segments down to one. Then I'm going to add a correction deformer to this, so I can reform it while keeping it procedural for no apparent reason. Now one end, the one attached to the flower, is usually more tapered than the other, while the other end is a little bit more pointy. So that looks kind of like a coffin for a rather rotund gentleman. But if I add a subdivision surface to this, whoop, it runs it into looking like a petal. Let's set both subdivisions to two and group the whole thing. I shall name this petal because it contains the petal. And then we can add some more deformers to the mix to make it a better shape. Starting with a couple of bend deformers. I'll add the first one and just bend it to see that, of course, it bends on the wrong axis. So I'll rotate that around to exactly 90 degrees. And then I'll start setting the scale so it just covers the petal perfectly. X doesn't need to be big at all. I'll set Y to a straight up 200 and then Z needs to be set to 400 to cover it. I will just move this to position so it just starts bending one half of our petal and then I'll go in and change the mode to unlimited so it bends both sides equally much. I'll set the degrees to 50 and tick the keep y axis length box. So that is one of our bends done and I'll copy that to make the second one. I'll name our first one H for horizontal and the second one I will name bend and that one is going to bend on the other axis. So I'll spin it around and then center it to our petal as well as scale it up on our y-axis, just so it covers the entire thing. And now I have to nudge it slightly, just so it starts bending right at the base of the petal. See? That's perfect. And I want it to bend significantly more than the other one. I'm going to have it start all the way at 125 degrees, and then over time I'm going to have it bend around. Like a bird flapping its wing. Or maybe more aptly, like a flower blooming. So. Starts at 125, and I will set a keyframe for that at frame 0, and over the course of, let's say, 100 frames, because that's going to be 4 seconds, it will go all the way around to minus 160. So it's just like a little cheese doodle. Except that it animates kind of like a flower petal. And I'll also animate the horizontal bend starting at 100 degrees so it starts properly folded up into like a little bud shape and then over time as it animates i think i'm going to turn it actually all the way down to zero so it's just completely flat so setting that key and playing it back it looks like this nice smooth movement so we're actually done with our deformers now i can hide those and then I will actually offset the axis point of our null object to make sure that the pivot point of our petal is actually at the base of the petal because we're going to clone this later and that's going to be very helpful to us. A flower grows, right? So what I'm going to do now is animate the scale. Starting at frame zero, they will all be tiny, 0.01 in scale. Then I'll jump ahead to frame 20 where I want the Y scale to be all the way up to one and then a few frames later, frame 35, I want the X and Z scale to catch up with that. And so those few little keyframes gives us this animation. And it kind of just pops into existence. Not bad for a few minutes, but we've only just begun. After that initial scale up, I wanted to scale back down again. So around 50 frames, I'll set keyframes for the scale once again. Jump ahead to frame 100 and just set it to zero. That scales up and it loops around and then it collapses back in on itself. I still think this needs a little bit more rotation. So I'm going to animate the pitch parameter as well. At frame zero, I'm going to let it be at 30 degrees. Then as the animation plays out, I'm going to let it animate down to zero. That just makes the whole move a little bit more fluid. Still a bit rough around the edges though. Now this is going to be a bit counterintuitive. To get the right shape of the flower, I'm going to need to animate the position of this single petal. And that's also going to help it move out of the way before the next petal comes in. 
Now immediately at frame 1, I'll set a keyframe for the Y position, so we can have it move out of the way. Frame 25, I'm going to have it be all the way up to 100 centimeters. Then I'll skip ahead to frame 70 and animate the petal down to 50 centimeters. I also want it moving on the Z axis to move out of the way. So frame 0, set a keyframe. Jump ahead to frame 50 where I'll set the Z axis to 75 centimeters. Then at the end of the animation, frame 100, I'll have the Z position be back at 0. And that gives us this kind of P shape, which animated looks like this. And to actually see if this is smooth, we can do a clever little trick with the tracer object. So I'll select the subdivision surface and then go to MoGraph and create a tracer object. And as you can see, that traces the parts of the vertices. That shows us a rough profile of what the final flower might look like. And that concludes our main animation part. Now we need more petals. So I'll start by putting this petal in a null, which I'll name Petal. Then comes the time to clone this right out. So stick that in a cloner object. And create about 40 clones to start with. I'll swap the mode from per step to end point. Don't want it to move on the Y axis at all. In fact, I just want it to spin around. All the way up to 3600 degrees. And I'll also turn up the amount to 150%. So they kind of align. But as you can see, they all happen at once. And the key to getting this into a continuous blooming flower shape is to offset the time. And now you're probably thinking, wow, well, let's go to MoGraph, there's a time effector. Wrong. The one we want is the step effector. Let's start out by turning this spline here linear. So I'll select those points and hit the L. Then we can go into parameter, turn off the scale. But we do want to change the time offset to the same time it takes for our animation to play through once. And as I pull this value, you can see that it turns into a bit of a flower shape. And playing it through, we see that it kind of blooms out from one point in the center, folds out like a flower and then loops back around. Although it currently doesn't loop. We'll get to that. And we'll also add more petals later so it looks a bit more like a rose. As it stands, these petals all look more or less the same. So, let's create a trusty old random effector. Don't really want any jiggly on the position parameter, maybe just like 10 on Z position. But we do want a tiny bit of rotation. I'm talking like 2 degrees on the heading. Let's just add a frame offset of 1. So now they're not all doing the same thing at the exact same time. Just a little bit of randomness. It just makes anything look better. How about we tidy up our workspace a bit? I'm going to create a null. Call it flower. And just stick anything relating to this flower right in that null. I don't even need the tracer object anymore, so I'll just delete that. With a tidy workspace, we can take this flower to the next level. I'm going to add a connect object to our flower null and reference our cloner object in that connect object. And then, finally, I get to add my favorite deformer, the jiggle deformer, which surprisingly makes it jiggle slightly. Right. I can keep stiffness at 40. I'll turn down structural to 40 as well. Drag, I'm going to drag all the way up to 20. And under advanced, I'm going to change the number of springs down to two as well as the iterations. That's just going to help us keep the scene moderately speedy. It's going to be plenty slow anyway. And now you might be able to see a slight glitch in this animation. And that's actually because I forgot to uncheck the weld option on our connect object. So there, that fixes that. That blooms as smooth as syrup. The next thing I'd like to do with this is add just a tiny bit of thickness to it. So I'll select the connect object and go up to simulate under cloth, I will find myself a cloth surface. And I'll make sure to turn down the subdivisions and then just turn up the thickness to one. And we get some fong action as well. To round this off, I'll just add the cloth surface into a subdivision surface. And while we're in here, I'm just going to change the UVs to boundary mode. Because we'll need that for when we texture this later. So even though we've added thickness to these petals, they still look quite flat. So let's change that, and also add a bit more randomness. I'm going to create a particle force, namely a turbulence. I'm going to select my jiggle object, and drag in our turbulence into the forces tab, 
So now when we play it through, you probably can't tell the difference until we really turn up the power of this. I'll set it to 250. And now you see that it kind of adds some wibbles and wobbles on our petals, which is quite nice. It's just a little bit wrong at the moment. So I just turn up the scale a little bit until it looks about right and turn down the frequency so it doesn't change as quickly and looks a bit less jarring. And now we actually have a rather nice animation here. So next step would be to add all the petals in. So I'm going to find a nice representative frame to stop at. And then I'll go into our cloner object and add in up to, I'm going to go for 80 petals right now. And now we have this rather nice flower shape as well. And I'll just do a quick render of this, so I'm going to have to move it up first because I have an invisible floor here that I don't want to intersect. So I'll move it up about 200 centimeters, And then I can do a quick render. And as you can see, it's just a, it's just a dull grey flower in a dull grey room. So to remedy this, I'm going to create a new material, which I'll apply to our connect object. And I'll name it Petal, because everything in this goddamn scene is named Petal. Then I can get started by adding a gradient to our color channel. And then I'll turn it vertical so it goes from the inside of the petal to the tip. And then I'm going to make sure the inside of the petal is slightly blue, or rather dark blue, because I want to make a blue flower, because blue flowers are nice. And then at the uh, outer part, I want it to be slightly brighter blue. Now obviously this needs to be an alien flower, so I'm going to go ahead and add some luminance to this, because that's how you make things alien. In the texture channel, I want a layer shader. And to that layer shader, I'm going to add another gradient. This one also needs to be vertical, because I'm going to make just the outer edges glow slightly. I'll turn up the black points almost all the way to the top. And I'm going to make that glow blue as well. Let's just go with the rest of the flower. I also want an intermediate point here, which is a slightly darker shade of blue and a bit more colorful. And then I'm going to go in and change the interpolation from smooth knot to cubic knot. And after that, I can turn up the intensity of the brightest point, something like 125. And then I'll also make it slightly more blue, because now it's going to be a bit blown out. And then I'll also make the intermediate point slightly more blue. So now I get this nice and lovely, quite natural looking fall off. And rendering it again, we can see that it looks a bit more interesting now. But you know what else makes it look more interesting? Texture. I'll turn off Cycle for now, and then I'll go back into our layer shader and create a brand new noise texture. The noise type I want is not the regular one, I want the Ober noise because I find that one looks quite swirly and natural. I'll stretch that out on the Y axis, set that to a thousand percent. Then I also have to make sure I change the space from texture to UV space. Back in our layer shader, I'll change the transfer mode of the noise texture to multiply. So that gives us all this brand new detail in the glow. And I'll go and do the same thing in our luminance channel, multiply, and turn the brightness up to 150%. So we get this really intense glow around the edges. Give it a render. And you can see it looks so much more interesting than what we had before. Some aspects are still a bit shite though, so let's address that. First off, the specular. Still has that default specular look to it. So I want to get rid of that default specular and create my own GGX specular. Setting the roughness to roughly 33% and all the other parameters are fine for now I just want to add a Fresnel I'm gonna add one of the default dielectric ones but why not whiskey for a flower makes sense doesn't it giving that a quick render we can see that it has a slightly better sheen to the petals if anything I'm gonna turn the roughness down slightly to give it a bit more of a waxy look next up I'm gonna add a bump because it needs that bit of extra detail Regular noise will do just fine. I just need to stretch that out on the y-axis, same as I did with the luminance noise. And then change this one from texture space to UV space. Make sure to turn up the power. Somewhere around 50% should do. Another render. And bam! Suddenly has all this detail, all these ridges like petals might do. The only thing left for us to do now, really, is to make this infinitely loop. And the way to do that is to bring up a timeline and make sure our animation tracks all have a keyframe on frame 0 and frame 100. Then I can just select all the keyframes, come on drag, to copy those. Then I'll just make sure to copy these for as long as I want my animation to go on. 
Now, this is kind of the bad way of doing it. Normally, I would just go and select my animation tracks. And under properties, I'd select before and after to repeat and then just enter the amount of repetitions I want. But because we're using a cloner with a time offset, that's just not going to work. It needs keyframes. So this is the way we do it for now. Just click and drag and copy for as long as you have to. But once you've done that, you should end up with something a little like this. So now that you know how to make a blooming flower, next up we'll learn how to make the stem grow from just a tiny sprout to a fully formed flower. But that's next time. And until that time, best of luck with your botany, and remember to stay in infinite looping motion. Maestro. Maestro.